Most freelance web designers fall into the same traps, overcomplicating their business. And in my 13 year career, I've made a lot of these mistakes myself, and I have seen them hold back amazing designers from having a profitable and sustainable career and scaling to six figures and beyond. Want to avoid them and set yourself up for success? Then this video is just for you. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Adrian Somoza, former lead designer at MediaMonks turned full-time business owner. And I help freelance web designers not only improve their design skills, but also uncap their income ceiling. And if you're not new and you found already a lot of value in my free content, then consider joining the Bone Club, my mentorship program where I help freelance web designers build a financially peaceful and a creatively challenging career. And you can learn alongside me and other like-minded web designers who are striving towards the same goals as you. So if you're interested, click the link below to apply and let's have a chat. Now, having said that, let's dive into today's topic. Pitfall number one is building a website too early. If you build a website too early, you won't have any traffic source in place and clients won't find you or find your site, right? And so a website is really useless in that case. If you don't have a marketing strategy in place and you're not getting leads consistently, then having a website is too early for you and you need to focus on what I just said, right? Marketing and getting leads. Once you fix that, then you can focus on building a website to scale your lead generation and your sales funnels. Number two is spending major time on minor things. Should I use a profile picture or should I use a logo? Should my Instagram handle be my name or should it be a business name, right? Those things don't really make move the needle and don't really matter that much. Just pick a decision. You're not gonna go wrong with any of those choices, right? But don't focus on minor things that won't give you big results, right? Focus on the most important things that might be boring, right? And try to avoid procra procrastinating on working on the things that you know really matter, like sales, for example. Number three, thinking you need to reach a certain skill level before selling. I've had clients that with very little experience went from, for example, 1K to 10K a month consistently. What I teach my Bone Club members is that it's not so much about the experience that you have. It's not so much about becoming a senior in web design before getting to 10K. That 10K price is not only composed of your seniority, right? That's not 100% of the price. Of course, expertise matters, right? Because you can deliver better results faster, but you can do amazing things that solve real business problems with much less experience than what I had when I went freelance, when I finally right, decided to go freelance after seven years of working at agencies, right? You can do that much faster and save yourself a lot of time, time if you learn how to become an expert in a niche and in one service, like for example, my client Miklas did, and he went from being just like a junior to medium level in, in expertise designer and charging 1K to charging 10K a month or per client, right? In just a year, right? So you can save a lot of time if you learn how to price yourself and what are the really important things for your client. Number four, creating content for other designers, not clients, right? If you create content about hierarchy, typography, colors, technical things that only designers care about. You're going to attract designers. Now, if you want to attract potential clients that are willing to pay high ticket for your services, right? A high ticket price, then you need to learn how to talk about their pain points and talk about their problems, their business problems, and show them how you with your designs can help them solve those problems. The more testimonials you have, the better. But at the beginning, at least show them with your content how you can help them solve their problems and talk about their pain points, not just about, you know, technical things like hierarchy, typography, grids. 
Number five is assuming you know what clients need without any research, right? What I say to my Bone Club members is that amateurs assume experts diagnose. When you go to a doctor, right, you don't say, hey, Mr. Surgeon, uh, I want a surgery in my brain. Please, uh, please do us like, let's schedule it, right? You don't go and tell them what to do, right? You go to the doctor for the doctor to ask you questions make studies and diagnose what's going on in your in your health right and diagnose what exactly is the solution right that's what experts do they diagnose so don't assume right and and a surgeon right won't tell you okay yeah mr client um come here i'm gonna do the brain surgery right now right never that will happen because it would be you know outrageous so don't assume as an expert you know that clients know what they need and that they are just asking for a website but they they don't really know if they even need one right Uh, so don't just come to the conversation assuming that everything is what the client is telling you ask questions diagnose jump on calls with potential clients and ask them what are the pain points what are the their goals, what's holding them back from getting there, right? And help them uncover and diagnose what's really going on and how you can help them. Number six is thinking that you need a big audience to land clients. You don't really need to, like Mikolas, for example, is another, uh, again, an example of someone who didn't have a big audience, didn't have 10,000 followers on any particular social media yet in one year he went from again 1k to 10k consistently without a big following how because he learned how to go out there and get potential clients and even if you if you have 1000 followers if you, if they are the right followers right that can become your potential clients that's all you need right to have a consistent you know one project a month at 10k for example right you just need i don't know 500 you know 1000 followers you don't need hundreds of thousands okay remember you're not an influencer or you don't have to become one you need to become a business owner and a business owner doesn't have thousands upon thousands of followers number seven shiny object syndrome right you're constantly switching tools and software pursuing the new tools and new techniques what's the new typeface that this foundry released right any of of those things are fun to do but they won't help you build a sustainable business so don't go after the new things right my business mentor taught me that business is actually simple we tend to overcomplicate it but business is actually simple you just need to focus and double down on the things that really make the difference for you and then ditch the rest of the things Number eight, overanalyzing every decision, right? It's a a little bit regarding the fear, right, as well. It's fear of not being good enough, of, you know, having to make sure that you're making the right decision with every little thing that you do. The solution to this is just take action and refine as you go. Do it afraid. Franklin Roosevelt used to say, courage is not the absence of fear, it's as, is, sorry, it's acting in spite of it number nine building too many income streams so this means you know adding more services trying to sell courses trying to sell templates trying to just trying to sell sell more 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 right and expanding horizontally instead of choosing one thing and becoming really good at it right so my suggestion and my advice is focus on one line of business to increase your value scale vertically right not horizontally less but better like didn't rams used to say number 10 is focusing on vanity metrics you know i'm guilty of this i prioritized likes and follows over actual sales and um, i was measuring my success by social media engage- engagement instead of revenue and sales now the solution here is to track revenue track leads and track conversion rate you know metrics that really matter in your business so focus on business growth over popularity what's good for the ego is bad for the pocket number 11 trying to serve anyone with anything 
right? Lack of specialization leads to lower quality of work and lower perceived value. Spring thin will keep you stuck in the hamster wheel. So if you want to become a high paid web designer, focus on less projects and better ones, then niche down to a specific service in a specific industry and become a true ex expert faster. Steve Jobs said, focus comes from saying no to a thousand things to make sure we don't get on the wrong track or try to do too much, okay? Now, if you're serious about avoiding these pitfalls and scaling your freelance career the right way, the Bone Club is here to help. Click the link below to join and start transforming your web design business today. That's it for today's video. Hope you found it valuable. And as always, let's bridge the gap one pixel at a time.